Thanks, Kathleen, and thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm the program coordinator for DBCA's Western Shield program, and I'm here to talk about uh, landscape scale feral cat management. Uh, this presentation's been prepared by uh, Michelle Drew, our zoologist for the program, and myself. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, Wajak Yungar people on the lands that we're standing and uh, for this conference. Um, also, just one other thing, we've, we do have information about access to a radicat just outside uh, in the corridor at the Western Shield stand. There's a little information sheet there. Uh, so feel free to take a photo of that if you want information about, <laughs> about um, access to a radicat. Wow, you've got to be careful with the, um, the mouse pad. <laughs> um, so, so, all right, can you just see that? Um, so the mission of Western Shield is to recover and sustain wild populations of Australian native fauna threatened by foxes and feral cats. Uh, it includes critical weight range mammals like the woylie, uh, bird species like the western ground parrot and other reptile species. We've got the western swamp tortoise up here, um, but there's a number of other reptiles as well, um, such as nesting sea turtles on the northwest cape um, where we're protecting them from feral predators. Uh, this is the, the list of species uh, up here. There's about 30 that are our focus uh, for the program. And uh, these species uh, drive our priorities in terms of the sites we operate at across the state. Uh, there's our, our main focus as a program internally is to cover and deal with the manage, uh, and manage the threat of uh, introduced predators uh, to these species. There's a whole range of other species as well that benefit at the sites we operate, which are not listed as threatened um, in the state. Uh, and there's obviously also ecosystem benefits um, to managing um, species like digging animals like Quenda and Bilby at the sites that we operate. Uh, this map shows our fauna recovery sites across the state. Um, the overall area of the program hasn't changed that dramatically from when we first started when Sid Shea is uh, uh, Dave mentioned earlier, Sid was one of the main um, drivers of expanding the program. Uh, so the footprint of the program is about 3.7 million hectares across uh, Western Australia. Um, of that, um, in terms of active feral cat management, it's about 1 million hectares or a bit more than that. It varies a bit, um, but about a million hectares of country that we are actively managing feral cats. Uh, so. Originally, the program's focus was on foxes uh, and, and the southwest was the focus. Uh, we, we did have cat baiting happening in the north as, as part of research trials. Uh, and over time, uh, with the registration of Eradicat around that 2015 period, we've been able to integrate it to new sites such as uh, Kelbarry um, and on the south coast, uh, that was a bit over 10 years ago now. Um, at key sites where we're protecting fauna um, on the, uh, along the southern um, heathlands. So some very diverse habitat types um, that we operate. Um, the way we manage uh, feral cats at a landscape scale, our main tool and pretty well our primary tool in Western Australia is landscape scale baiting. Um, we've got, um, I suppose, sites which range from uh, a few thousand hectares right, to, right through to several hundred thousand hectares. So it's, it's big country that we're trying to manage uh, foxes and feral cats on. Um, we deploy the baits from aircraft and then also on the ground. The baits are produced in our Harvey Bait Factory facility um, and we produce about 600,000 of those. They're distributed around the state at those sites uh, that we operate. Uh, it's quite a logistical challenge to get them out uh, we've got a bait truck, uh, we've got aircraft, we've got um, storage facilities at airstrips and we have to move fuel and baits around, um, around the state to be able to get them in place. They're deployed mainly in winter months. Uh, as Dave mentioned before, we try and target when cats are most hungry. Uh, so our winter months is the predominant season that we try to target. On the south coast, uh, we, 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 we do uh, autumn instead because the, the winter can be a problem for the baits with the wetness affecting efficacy. Um, the program's backed up by a monitoring framework which is landscape scale in itself. Uh, and the program has had monitoring since day one and the predominant focus uh, 
has been focusing on, on the native species we're trying to protect and there's been cage trap monitoring. We've got a, a fairly long-term monitoring data set. Uh, we've also got spotlighting surveys as well to gauge the, uh, I suppose, the trend of our native species at the sites. And more recently, uh, we've introduced predator monitoring. People would say, why didn't we have this at the start? But we obviously didn't have cameras. Um, sand pads were used for quite some time there, particularly in the research space, but we're now operationalizing camera monitoring and we've got um, uh, hundreds of cameras out across the state um, at the sites where we're actively managing uh, foxes and feral cats. In terms of feral cats, there's uh, four sites that we've got um, active predator management um, occurring, and that's in um, Cape Range, Kelbarry, um, Cape Arid, and Michelle, I'm sure. And the fits, yes. Um, this is our monitoring network just in the southwest. Um, the monitoring has predominantly been southwest focused. So a lot of these sites aren't, we aren't actually actively doing feral cat management at yet, except on the south coast and a bit in, in the wheat belt. Um, so the orange uh, diamonds there are our cage trap monitoring sites. Uh, the blue ones are our camera monitoring sites. Priorities looking forward um, really is consolidating what we're doing at the sites where we are actively managing cats. And that involves, I suppose, looking at operational trials of different uh, baiting prescriptions, how we integrate eradicate with our fox management, how we integrate eradicate and uh, other control techniques together in a targeted fashion, and also researching key knowledge gaps such as understanding the biology and ecology of cats at different areas, uh, what they're consuming, uh, their home range, movement patterns, those kind of things. Um, that's really key to what we do. Um, integrating feral cat management at, at other sites. So we wanna grow that area of impact um, for the program where we're a actively managing cats at, at, at more than just the 1 million hectares. Uh, implementing our monitoring, uh, that's happening uh, already, but we know we need to do more in that space, particularly in the monitoring of predators um, to gauge the effectiveness of what we're doing and improve over time. And then building, continuing to build community support for the program and the management of feral predators which are having uh, impacts on our native wildlife. So it's, that's, uh, that's really key to the program. Just like to say thank you to uh, everyone for listening to our talk. Um, all of the work that we do here wouldn't be possible without um, our sponsors um, and also our staff that work in the um, districts and regions which deliver the baiting and the monitoring and, and, the, uh, and the management of cats uh, on ground. Thank you.